Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a hexic equation with complex numbers. Z to the power 6 plus 1 is equal to square root of 3 multiplied by i. And we're going to be solving for z. Now when you look at a problem like this, on the left hand side I do see something like sum of 6th powers. Maybe sum of squares, maybe sum of cubes, right? You can definitely write it in more than one way. But is that going to help? Probably not. But you can still try it. I can try to factor this. Like suppose this could be written as follows. And then this is sum of two squares. And as you know, in the complex world, we can factor sum of two squares. How? If you have a squared plus b squared, remember how we find the modulus of a plus bi, which is the name of this channel, by the way. Don't forget that, right? And we can reverse engineer that process, and we'll get, we're going to get a plus bi times a minus bi. Isn't that cool? We can factor sum of two squares in the complex world. So if you apply that, you're going to get z cubed plus 1i, right? Or i. And z cubed minus i equals square root of 3 times i. Wow. Is this really going to work? I think so. I just wanted to give it a try and it looks like it's going to work because we can use substitution. Let's call this w. Another complex number, right? And we can kind of get w plus i multiplied by w minus i equals square root of 3i. Seriously? Is this going to work? Well, you didn't have to do this. You could immediately replace z cubed with w here and then you would get something a lot simpler right obviously but anyways i don't know why i did this but this becomes y squared i mean w squared minus i squared which is plus one equals square root of three i well this looks like a quadratic but there's no w so we're just going to use square roots how do you use square roots you can go ahead and by the way this can also be anyways never mind it's not going to help so now we can go ahead and write it this way. And then from here, we can try to find the square roots of negative 1 plus root 3i. Hmm. Let's go ahead and think about it. Do you, do you think we can come up with uh, a number or a complex number whose square would be this? Can you think of something? And if I told you what it is, you would probably not believe it. So let's go ahead and find out. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and write this in polar form. And for that, I can just quickly draw a diagram, the argon diagram. Negative 1 is going to look like this, and root 3i is going to look like this, roughly. And then my number is going to appear as a point in the, in the coordinate plane. This is kind of imaginary axis. This is the real one, so on and so forth. And now, obviously, there's a distance from uh, 0, which is the modulus. So it's going to be my r, and this is going to be my theta. And if you look at this angle very carefully, uh, this is the shorter side, this is the longer side. We have the 1 root 3, 2 triangle, or 30, 60, 90 triangle. Obviously, this angle is going to be 30 degrees, and this is a right angle. So this is going to be a 60 degrees, but we're interested in theta, which is going to be 120 degrees. So theta is 120, which can also be written as... 2 pi over 3 radians, right? Great. It's great that we don't have a symbol for radians because I don't like writing the degree symbol. So now let's go ahead and write this as the modulus, which is 2 times e to the power i theta, which is 2 pi over 3. Now what can I do with this? Cut that in half, square root. That's the square root of 2 multiplied by e to the power i times pi over 3. That's going to be 60 degrees, so you can kind of write it as square root of 2 times cosine of pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. And then this is just going to become cosine of 60 is 1 half, so it's going to be like root 2 over 2. And sine of, uh, what is that called? Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. If you multiply by that, you're going to get square root of 6 over 2. This is what I meant by like if I told you what it is, you probably wouldn't believe this right? That, but that's my number. Wait, there's something missing. Okay, I'm missing the i, and if without the i, this doesn't make sense, right? Okay, so that's going to be my number. Great. 
So, but that's just one of the radicals. So W0, maybe W1, I don't know. And then the, probably W1 is a better one. And W2, the other square root is just gonna be the opposite. That's why I didn't really worry about the uh, other argument. So we're good. Okay, but these are just W values. And what is W? W is Z cubed. So now you can go ahead and take, like set these equal to Z cubed, right? both of these, and try to find for z from there. Let's go ahead and do it. z cubed equals root 2 over 2 plus root 6 over 2i. Here's the problem. If you try to find the cube root like this, it's going to be hard because what is the argument, right? Well, we already know that. Come on. We have w in polar form, so we don't have to go through that trouble one more time. Let's go ahead and just use this. This is, oops, not that one. This is w. All right, great. So let's go ahead and use that. W is equal to root 2 times e to the power i pi over 3. And I'm supposed to find or set this equal to z cubed. In other words, I have to find the cube roots of this number. And to find the cube roots, here's the process. You take the cube root of the modulus, which is going to give you the sixth root of 2 from here, if you cube root the square root, right? And then the angle is going to be cut in thirds. So it's going to be i times pi over 9. But guess what? This is only one of the z values. There's going to be six of them. Because a complex number has six sixth roots. Wait a minute, are we finding cube roots? But yes, there are two square roots. So there's a total of six z values. This is just one of them. And to find the other ones, you have to think about it this way. There is, since there are six of them, there are going to be two pi over six radians apart which is pi over 3. Or you can think of it as 3 pi over 9, because we have a 9 at the bottom, it's easier to add. For example, the next one is just going to be the 6 root of 2 multiplied by e to the power. Now increase the pi over 9 by 3 pi over 9, you're going to get 4 pi over 9. And increase that again, you're going to get 7 pi over 9, and then you're going to get 10 pi over 9, 13, so on and so forth. Get the idea? Yes. So that's the idea, and that will give you pretty much all the solutions, but you can go ahead and pretty much write the rest. Let me tell you real quick, there's a second method which is more direct, but I'm not going to finish it up because that's your task. So now, think about it this way. We were able to write this in pol uh, polar form, right? So why don't we do that directly instead of substituting something? So this was 2 times e to the power i times 2 pi over 3, wasn't it? Now, we can go ahead and take the 6 root directly. If you do that, let's just do 1. That's going to be the 6 root of 2 times e to the power. Now, you're supposed to divide the argument by 6 or multiply by 1. 6, 2 pi over 6 times 1 over 6 is just going to be pi over 9 as before. Yay, we got the same argument, of course. And now, since you have to split 2 pi into 6 pieces, which is pi over 3, or 3 pi over 9, you can just go ahead and increment by that, and you'll get all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.